Welcome to our St. Anne and St. Joseph Parish Online Mass. We are so glad that you are joining us today. The music for this Mass can be found on our website, growinholiness.org. And now I invite you to take a moment to quiet yourself and prepare for the sacred mysteries that we are about to celebrate.
the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it not. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh uh-huh. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second to him. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, greetings, everyone. It's good to be with you this weekend as we gather giving thanks and praise to our God. The gospel that we heard this weekend from Mark is a familiar one because we know how the early church under Jesus was working, how he was laying the foundations, how he was preparing and teaching, how he was forming the early Christians so that when he would eventually ascend into heaven, they could continue the mission, that they could continue to preach the good news, that they could continue to heal, they could continue to reflect and teach and share the love of God that Christ revealed. Today we hear about Jesus sending out the disciples two by two to go out and to preach this good news, to heal, to share the mercy and love of God. And while many of us will think today we're not sent out two by two, we're not like other churches that kind of do that stuff, we still know deep down inside, though, that we as Catholics, because of our baptism, because we've been called and claimed by God, because we realize we have something special here in our faith, we know that we share this similar calling that we are sent to preach the good news. Hopefully we all know, hopefully we all recognize, hopefully we all accept this mission of sharing God's good news, His love, His mercy with everyone we encounter each day. But in today's Gospel, when Jesus is sending them out, there's this little asterisk that kind of, that kind of uh, would make me a little anxious. Because while Jesus could say, here's everything you need to bring, how prepared you need to be, it almost seems like he sends them out unprepared. No food, no sack, no money in their belts, not a second tunic. He sends them out what would appear to be ill-prepared. They don't have everything that they need. And I bring this up because I think for many of us in our lives, we like to be in control. We like to be prepared. We like to anticipate what's going to happen. For most of us, I would argue, we like to be in the driver's seat. Whether it's at work, what the expectations are, we like to kind of direct ourselves. Whether it's with friends or family, we like to have some kind of input or control. And even when it comes to faith, we like to be in control. And I think the gospel today is flipping that upside down. Because Jesus is sending the disciples out to trust in Him. To trust in His providence. To trust in His plan. To trust that the people whom they will encounter will help them along the way. And yet I can imagine as these disciples were preparing, they too had to have anxieties, uncertainties, fears, because they too probably felt ill-prepared for what God had in store for them. And so I think the teaching for us, if we reflect and think about this, is not only our mission to go out and preach the good news, but this whole idea and concept of allowing God to be in control in our lives is a good point for us to consider and to reflect upon. I think while the Gospel today reminds us that we have this missionary call as Catholics, as Christians, this underlining teaching or challenge for us is to really see and reflect upon in our lives who's in the driver's seat. Who's controlling or directing our words and actions? 
How faithful or trusting are we in God that things will be taken care of? How much do we allow Him or His plan to direct us in our lives? My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's challenging to go and share the good news, but I think it's almost even more challenging to trust in God in that action and in every action we go through each day. To trust that God is in the driver's seat. To trust that God has a plan for us. To trust that God will give us the peace, the grace, the fulfillment that we need in our lives. And to trust that all will be well if we allow Him to be in control. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to begin, as we begin another week, let us reflect upon that, that simple yet profound teaching. Let us reflect upon that call to trust in God and His plan. Let us see those areas where we like to be in control, where we don't like to let up, where we don't like to allow Him to direct us, and let us seek to let go, to let Him be in control, to let His plan direct us, to let His plan to guide us. We know it's difficult, and yet we know because of our loving God that all will work out if we simply trust Him and His plan. And so this week, let us make that our focus. Let us make that our, 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 our goal to achieve. And while we know we may come up short a little bit, because we know our fears, anxieties, all those things that hold us back, let's continue to make progress in growing in trust in Him. We can only imagine what must have been going through those disciples' minds as they were being sent out. Maybe feeling ill-equipped, maybe feeling scared, maybe not trusting in the unknown. And yet we know God was able to work great things through them because of them and because of their faith and trust in God. Let us pray that in our lives we too can bear much fruit, that we too can be men and women of trust and faith in God's plan that through our lives, God will be given greater glory and honor. Let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in, in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust and confidence in our God, let us place our needs before Him. For all leaders, religious and political, that they may be inspired by the mercy of God to work together toward the welfare and protection of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, 
that they may experience that comforting embrace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be open to giving up control to God so that he can truly lead us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions inscribed in our book of intentions and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that more young people will respond to God's call to serve his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that they may seek the glory of God and rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place these needs before you, and we ask that you grant them according to your holy will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Spirit, 
you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith in your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
and now, not now, receive Jesus sacramentally in the most holy Eucharist. Please join us in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come and base you spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have just a couple of announcements this weekend. This coming Tuesday, we'll continue our summer school and faith program with a special presentation about Mary, our Blessed Mother. Please join us Tuesday the 13th at 7 p.m. in St. Joseph Hall. There's no need to bring anything or worry about costs, or if you've made it to the previous ones, just show up and join us this coming Tuesday for a wonderful evening talking about our Blessed Mother. Again, it begins at 7 p.m. in the St. Joseph Parish Hall. Next Saturday, July 17th, is our first annual Fremont Food Truck Festival. It will be from 3 to 8 p.m. in the St. Joseph parking lot. And we're excited for this event, and we sincerely hope that you'll be able to stop by, enjoy some wonderful food, entertainment, kids' zone, and activities for adults. Please continue to consider joining us for a wonderful event, 3 to 8 on July 17th. The St. Anne Novena begins next Saturday. Novena booklets will be available in both of our churches throughout the week. As previously mentioned, this is our final recorded Mass. As you know, uh, well, about a year ago, we started these recorded Masses because of COVID and to make sure we can connect with all of our parishioners at home. Obviously, as things have returned to a certain sense of normalcy, our Mass attendance has returned to, to pre-COVID numbers, and the number of viewers at home continues to, to get smaller and smaller. So. A uh, decision was made to end these recordings. We certainly like to welcome back to church everyone who's still at home and still a little fearful. Please know that we do continue to be safe and uh, we have not had any major issues in either of our churches regarding COVID, so we hope you consider joining us. We'll also include in the bulletin a number of resources for television and online if you'd like to continue to watch and participate with the Mass online. Certainly we believe that receiving the Eucharist Gathering as a church community is some of the most important things we can do, so when you're up to it and if you're healthy and confident, we hope that you'll return us back in our churches to continue to gather around the altar of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.